Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael. I'm co-founder and CEO at Embed, where we automate embedded software development. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about the impact AI has on embedded software development and how we can leverage that to improve the workflow. But first, let's create a bit of context and discuss where the industry is at the moment and what kind of challenges developers are facing. Embedded software development is complex and meticulous process that's heavily dependent on the underlying hardware. Unlike web or mobile developers, embedded software engineers have to build complex layers of abstraction and start their development journey all the way down at hardware and work their way up through drivers and board support, hardware abstraction layers, APIs, only before getting to the application layer. A lot of that work is actually manual. And the processes haven't changed in the recent decades. So things are pretty much in the status quo in most of the ways. Even if you are lucky to actually build the firmware, now the question is, is it actually going to run on your hardware? So debugging and integration testing is actually one of the top concerns for developers. Because when you start integrate testing on your hardware, it sometimes feels like you're looking for a needle in a haystack, but also in the dark. You don't really know where to look, and it's extremely complex and takes a lot of time. To give a sort of a numerical perspective on this, over 400 million hours each year are allocated to, to just low-level development. That's our drivers and board support. And most of that work is extremely manual. It's about analyzing the technical documentation on semiconductor chips and integrating that into your firmware. And that's just 20% of the overall development effort you will have in your embedded software project. A big reason for that is the fact that embedded devices are by nature a unique combination of parts and architectural choices. So software engineers have to navigate that every time they uh, take upon new project. Meanwhile, challenges are piling up both outside and inside of the organization. Semiconductor shortages often force companies to switch components, triggering months of redevelopment effort and delaying production timelines. Meanwhile, the pace of semiconductor innovation is faster than the pace of the embedded software development tool chain uh, innovation. Effectively, embedded developers face the need to constantly integrate updated chips, figure out how they work, and spend a lot of time on that. The growth of connectivity itself, as I'm sure the audience knows quite well, is actually putting a lot of pressure on embedded developers at the same time. The reason for that is that a lot of mundane electronics that previously was unconnected suddenly became smart. So now the complexity of your project increases, increasing the timelines to delivery. The safety and security concerns of those IoT devices doesn't help. So inside the organization, meanwhile, companies often find themselves locked into a particular hardware where they already invested months into integrated in particular chip, and now they are suddenly unable to switch because all of that firmware was written, and they can't really afford the switch, even if the new part is commercially or technically superior. We also see companies often making uninformed component choices, when only months into the development, they find out that the component is not functioning as promised, only after they've built all of that uh, integration software. Finally, thousands of pages of data sheets and constantly updated errors are piling up on shoulders of embedded developers who have to navigate that. And that often results in real human errors that are really difficult to then isolate in the testing uh, phase. OK, but what does it all have to do with AI? <laughs> so we have this very complex environment that's very interconnected from multiple moving parts. Is there hallucinating black box, as someone like to call AI, a solution to all this? Do we really want to input this additional um, unknown into the equation? So existing AI capabilities can actually already help. We are seeing applications that already help developers to quickly generate unit tests on the code they wrote, help them to debug their code and create a digital programming pad to basically run the code reviews for you digitally. You can save 
hours, dozens of hours in your project infrastructure setup, helping to set up your make files, etc. But all this comes with a caveat that the systems, the generic systems, are actually hallucinating quite a bit. And if you are not an experienced embedded software developer, you actually might create, dig yourself a big hole instead of speeding up your uh, development effort. So it only works if you really, really know what you're doing and are able to spot issues uh, on early stage. But ultimately, those generic tools and that sort of uh, wide approach will not solve the problem. And there are a few reasons for that. Number one is that embedded software development has specific hardware-related challenges. How do we set up complex LoRa chips? How do we uh, manage our RTOSes? How do we manage, manage memory optimization? Things like that. Number two is that the majority of currently available uh, models are trained on a very poor set of embedded software training data. They've used GitLab open projects, and they actually, majority of those are hobby projects that we are not even sure if they work. And now suddenly they're generating code for us. So that definitely doesn't help. And that doesn't help the code to be compliant to any sort of meaningful software standard or regulations you miss or in the kinds. Uh, not to say your internal company code styles and standards. Finally, the stability is not there. You don't really, you're not really getting uh, stable code outputs out of the system, even though uh, sometimes the quality could be OK. But what if we actually look at the AI, not as a sort of a magic wand that's going to resolve the whole project issues for you, but a tool that can be used in a combination with existing technologies and methods to optimize targeted issues within the embedded development workflow. Let's look at a few examples of that, starting with documentation analysis. So surprise, unfortunately, <laughs> probably the better word, the language of communication between semiconductor manufacturers and device developers is unstandardized PDF document a data sheet that comes in all shapes and forms and is often really hard to navigate as a developer. What the AI can do in this context is to help us to extract the textual narratives and navigate it to only formulate the data that's relevant to the firmware uh, development. Effectively, pulling in the table charts formulas, text of the data sheet, and then structuring it in a standardized, machine-readable uh, way that we can be then used for post-processing. We've also already seen that Gen AI models trained on high-quality embedded software data set can generate pretty good results uh, in the quality of generated code. However, here again, we need to take more of a granular approach, targeting specific challenges in embedded software step by step and building specific solutions to resolve them, uh, starting from board support layer generation to hull setup and the application logic setup. Finally, I've already mentioned that existing tools are pretty good for unit test generation. But we can actually go a few steps further than that. First, Gen AI models can not only generate you code, they can also generate you test application that will see and emulate the behavior of the component and test that code that you've just generated, therefore sort of creating a feedback loop for you and helping you to identify issues if they happen. This can be C application that can be actually run on physical devices uh, for debugging. We've also already seen companies coming up to the market who are building um, product that are sim that is simulating hardware uh, and allows you to run your firmware on that simulated hardware um, using AI to um, simulate data streams, etc. To generally sum up, there is a significant potential for AI, for AI to disrupt the way that embedded software development is done. However, in order to be able to achieve that, 
we need to build specific solution for every stage of the development workflow. We need to be granular, and we need to use it in combination with proven tools. We need to be using deterministic code generation as well as the Gen AI. With that, we believe that in the next five to 10 years, we'll be seeing tools where you'll be able to upload your circuit board designs, provide your proprietary hardware data, your system performance targets and priorities, your architectural preferences, let's say which RTOS you want to run. And based on that, you will have on the fly generated hard board support and hardware abstraction layer, and a tool that will let you to visually set up your application logic and connect your third party services and protocols. With all of that, then virtually simulated uh, on uh, hardware. What we do at Embed right now is building the foundational layer of this technology. We basically are using machine learning to generate semiconductor drivers. The way we do it, we process component data sheets to create digital component models that embedded software developer can configure based on the specific use case. And then we use those to actually generate code for the target architecture that, you're, that the developer is running. Thank you. I'll be glad to answer any questions.